Date unknown. Dearest Anne, I fear this will be my final entry. All my men are gone, dead or missing. I no longer even know what day it is or if your eyes will ever see this journal. These woods are a maze, and I fear that whatever has been stalking us these past days will soon take me as well. Farewell, my love. Your time is not up, soldier. I have need of you yet. Mister? Are you okay, mister? Oh. You don't look so good. I better take you back to Grandma's house. She'll know what to do. Come on, mister. You can make it. It ain't that far. Follow her. Go. Grandma! Grandma, come quick! He was out there! In the woods! Just like she said, Grandma! But, but, but he don't look so good! Girl! What have you done this time? You! Better get you inside. Fetch me some fresh water from the well, Robin, and some rags. This man is hurt bad. Now don't you worry. The Lord has put you in my hands, and I'll take good care of you. Damn those dark woods. Mister? Where am I? Shh. You rest now. I'll take care of you. from the woods is calling me, but my grandma will take care of you, so don't you worry. You must hurry now. She's in great danger. Hurry! She needs you. No. Where is she? Hush. Now don't strain yourself. You're going to be all right now. The fever is down and your wound is healing up nice enough. We were plenty worried, though. You were nearly gone when Robin brought you here. Where am I? This is my home. My farm, just outside Burkittsville, Maryland. The little girl. Oh, Robin. My granddaughter, my precious child. I should thank her. She saved my life. She's gone missing. <laughs> what? Where? The woods have got her now. She came to me in a dream. She told me she was going somewhere. Sounds like the woods are calling you too. Just as well, because I need you to go there soon enough. First things first, though. I'm Bess Weaver. Your lucky Robin found you when she did. I helped tend to the injured during the war, and I learned a thing or two about treating a wounded man. That's a nasty shot you got across the side of your head. How did you get it? I... I don't remember. I can't remember much of anything, to tell you the truth. I... I don't even know who I am. No wonder, with a wound like that. Well, we'll just have to call you something, I suppose. 
I can't just have you wandering around like the living dead. Well, that's it. You walked out of the woods like a dead man reborn, just like that fella from the Bible. Lazarus, his name was. It fits you. At least until we can figure out your real name. Lazarus. Good a name as any, I guess. I remember being a soldier. Men were dying all around me, and I... Hush, hush now. You're just going to make things worse for yourself. Now you just lay back down. No. I I think I'm well enough to get up now. I never was one for lying about. At least I don't think I was. My uniform. What happened to it? I had to burn it. It was caked with dirt and blood. But I had something for you to put on. These belong to my son, Jimmy. And I don't reckon he'll be needing them. (laughs) That's kind of you, ma'am. But why do you say your son won't be needing them? Good Lord took him home. Been five years now. Doctor said it was the pox, but not me. I've seen pox before. I think it was those damn woods that killed my son. I'm sorry to hear that, ma'am. You've been good to me, taking me in and doctoring me up. But it don't feel right, wearing your boy's clothes. You can keep the clothes. Like I said, Jimmy doesn't have any use for them now. But I'm going to ask you for something in return. I'll do anything I can, ma'am. Those damn woods have my Robin, my precious baby. They're going to try to take her away from me, just like they took my Jimmy. I need you to get her back. The woods? What are you talking about? You've been out for three days now. Yesterday morning, while I was tending to your wounds, Robin disappeared. The girl's always been headstrong, just too damn stubborn. She said she was going to play in the woods, and I told her not to. But after I finished tending to you, she was gone. I knew where she went, and I knew something bad was happening. Those woods have always called to her, and now they've got her. It's... I'm sure she's okay. No, she's not. I got the neighbor folk to send for help, and they searched the woods around the house until nightfall. But no one found a trace of her. Parson Vance put together a search party to go look for her today. But those woods are too smart for them. They'll never find her. You're the only one who can find her. You made it out of those woods. The good Lord delivered you to us to protect my baby. I just know it. Ma'am, I can stand on my own two feet again, and for that I thank you. But I'm not in any shape to help anyone right now. But you have to. Those townsfolk don't know the woods like I do. They can't fight what's out there. But you're different. You have the power to bring back my little girl. I can see it in your eyes. Woods are just trees. If that little girl is out there, I'm sure the people of this town can find her. You're wrong. Those people are going to their deaths. And don't ask me how, I just know it. You're the only one who can save her. I brought you back from the gates of death, Mr. Lazarus, and you're in my debt now. I need you to repay me by finding my little Robin. All right, ma'am. Bess, I'll do what I can. Oh, thank you. I... she needs you. I don't know if it'll help, but there's a pistol in the drawer of that wardrobe. Jimmy bought it brand new from the coal company back in 81, just before he died. There's some bullets in there, too. Jimmy collected guns. Never fired him much, but he did love to have them. If you'd like, you can practice out back while I make you something to eat. I imagine you're hungry after so many days without a meal. No. Actually, I'm not. I know I should be but I'm not. Let me make you something anyway. You're going to need your strength. Rummage around the house if you like, and take what you need. You're welcome to whatever you find, if it'll help you find Robin. I 
I need you to tell me what you know about the woods. They're evil. That's all I can say. Some nights, I sit out on the porch and I swear the trees themselves are watching me. Other times, I hear sounds, like Robin playing when I know she's asleep, or the sounds of people throwing rocks. That's the worst, as if the trees are trying to trick you into going out there. Why don't you go out back and try out Jimmy's guns? They haven't been fired in a while, and you really ought to get a feel for them. Jimmy had him a nice little firing range on the back fence. Just some cans and things, but at least something to shoot at and test the sights. October 23rd, 1863. Dearest Anne, My orders finally came in after sitting in that damnable hospital in Washington, D.C., ever since Gettysburg. They're sending me to a supply unit in central Maryland, where I expect to see mercifully little fighting. It will be a nice change of pace overseeing supplies of shoes and uniforms after all the fighting I've seen this year. My new commanding officer is a Major Thomas Belling, who is reported to be a very good man. The countryside here is beautiful though the leaves have already fallen from the trees in anticipation of a long, harsh winter. I've stopped near a local farm to take in the brisk autumn air and write this entry. I intend to keep this journal during my stay here and send it off to you when I have filled it. At the rate I've been writing in it, I suspect I will be sending it off to you very soon. I miss you terribly and cannot wait for this savage war to end so that I can return and finally marry you as I promised so long ago. He must have been trying to steal food. Had better report this in town. Lazarus! Are you all right? Are you okay? Looked like you were in a different world just now. I was remembering... something. I could remember being a soldier. I remember... I don't know. It's all so fuzzy. Maybe you should come in and lie down for a minute. Thank you. I think I'll be fine now. I want to get going as soon as possible and find your granddaughter. I don't know why, but somehow I think she's the key to recovering my memory. There's a young fellow in town named Peter Durant. He runs the Burkittsville Historical Society, and he can tell you anything you need to know about the local area. It's at the edge of town. If you follow the road from the farm, you'll pass right by it. But that's also where the search party's meeting. I think you should stay away from them. If they're looking for Robin, why shouldn't I just go with them? I told you! Those men, their hearts are in the right place. But they're heading to their deaths. I don't know why, but I feel it right down to my bones. You mind what I'm saying. If you go with those men, you'll be going to meet your death, too. All right. I can move faster on my own anyway. I'll start with this Peter Durant character. Anything else you want to tell me? I made you some victuals, but I think it's better if you just take them with you. I'll go get them. And then you need to get going. You can eat it on the way to town. God speed to you, Lazarus. I'll pray that you find my Robin and bring her back to me safely. I'll do whatever I can to make sure that she's returned to you. This him? Afternoon. You the gentleman staying out at the Weaver place? I'm Peter Durant. We heard you might be coming to town. You feeling better? Much better. 
Thanks. So this is the man everyone's been talking about. I figure he might be a good place to start, being a stranger and Gentlemen, all. Gentlemen, let's be a little more accommodating. This man is a guest of Mrs. Weaver, and we should show him the same respect that she does. Well, maybe it'd be a good idea for Mr. Uh... Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. I didn't mention it. But you can call me Lazarus. Well, uh, as I was saying, maybe it'd be a good idea for Mr. Lazarus to join us in the search. We know these woods better than anybody, and there's no sense having two people lost out there. Yeah, we'll know right where you are when we have to come find you. I appreciate your concern, gentlemen. I didn't have anything to do with Robin's disappearance, and I want to find her just as much as you do. I made Mrs. Weaver a promise that I would. Thanks for the offer, but I'm going to look for her by myself. Mr. Lazarus, I'm Parson Vance. I take care of the spiritual needs of this town. When all this unpleasantness is over, I'd like to meet with you and tell you about our church. Oh, oh. Hmm, you don't look so good, mister. Why don't you come in and sit down? Uh, you boys go ahead and start the search. I'll take care of Mr. Lazarus and send him along when he's ready. All right, Peter. Come on, boys. I want to get out there before dark. I don't want that poor little girl to have to spend another night out there. Listen, friend, don't mind what the men are saying. Tensions are running a little high around here since Robin disappeared. And there's always been talk of the woods being haunted. Robin disappearing just brought all those legends back to the surface. There's even a legend about a witch out there. <laughs> but even a silly superstition can add fuel to the fire. Oh, oh my. You don't look so good. I'll be fine. I just need a minute. A minute to... October 24th. 1863. Dearest Anne, I encountered a rebel forager yesterday, which was quite a shock being so far behind the banks of the Potomac. I'm sorry to say that the man opened fire upon me, and it was my duty to kill him. I have arrived in the town of Burkittsville, Maryland, which is where my company is currently quartered. I have not yet met my new commanding officer, as he is a busy man, but I am waiting to report to him now, which has given me a moment to jot down these words. Come in, Lieutenant. Lieutenant Robert McNichol. Reporting as ordered, sir. Sit down, soldier. I understand you ran across a Confederate soldier yesterday outside of town. Yes, sir. He was foraging for food. Yes, I've gotten quite a few reports of rebel foragers from farms all over the county. The enemy sends in small teams like this from time to time to find food and supplies and disrupt our communications whenever possible. I believe there's a small unit of maybe eight to ten men operating out of the woods, not far from town. That way they can conceal their movement and gather up the supplies they've been stealing before heading back for Virginia. If you know where they are, why don't you just send a unit in after them? That's why I need you, Lieutenant. Now I'm sorry to have to do this to you so soon after your arrival, but you're the only combat experienced officer I have right now. And we've got to put an end to these raids. With all respect, sir, I was hoping to get a break from combat out here. My unit was wiped out at Gettysburg, and I... I'm well aware of your record, Lieutenant. Listen, I get all kinds of troops assigned here. From down-home farm boys who don't know which end of a rifle to point at the enemy, to men who've seen way too much of the horror of war, like yourself. But I have to do the best I can with what I've got. Washington just can't afford to send any troops out here to track down a single rebel foraging unit. So we have to take care of them ourselves. And you're the only officer I have right now who isn't a green volunteer or useless at commanding men. I know, sir, but it... But nothing. I've seen your record, and you know how to lead men. Right now, I need a man like you, and I am giving you a direct order to take a small group and find those rebels. Now, Lieutenant, are you going to refuse this order? No, sir. You can count on me. When do I leave? Immediately. I've taken the liberty of selecting some men for you. They're waiting for you outside. They're good men, Lieutenant. Two of them combat veterans, and a third local man who's been stationed here about a year. Mosley's his name, and he should be able to tell you a bit about the local terrain. Your orders are to take your men and head toward the forest along the main road. 
Crossing in when you meet Tappy Creek East. Find the rebels, report their strength, and avoid direct engagements if you are outnumbered. Otherwise, use your own discretion in confronting and eliminating any raiders you encounter. Any questions, Lieutenant? Can you tell me about my men, sir? Corporal William Newhouse is the ranking enlisted man, and the one with the greatest experience. He's a good shot, and an accomplished woodsman from Wisconsin. His unit was decimated at Chickamauga a few weeks back, so he hasn't been here long. Private Moore is a veteran of Gettysburg, like you. But he was with an artillery battery that arrived the last day of the battle, and didn't see much action. His unit was transferred a few weeks ago to fight out west with Grant, but somehow he got himself transferred here. He's got an uncanny sense of self-preservation that might come in handy. The final man, mostly, as I said, has been stationed here for about a year. No combat record, but he knows the local area, and should be able to help you get to know the lay of the land. What if I get into a real fight out there? I don't want any dead heroes. If you find a man or two on his own, like you did today, attempt to capture him. But don't endanger your men. By all accounts, the rebels are irregulars on foot. But on the off chance there's a whole company of cavalry out there, I want you to get back here and report it to me. Can you tell me anything else, sir? That's all the information I have right now. All right, then. Your men are waiting for you outside. Take what supplies you need, but I want you out on that road within the hour. You the new lieutenant they assigned us? I'm Lieutenant McNichol of Syracuse, New York. I've been assigned as your commanding officer. I'm Private Mosley, sir. I'm originally from Rockville, but I was assigned here. I'm Private Moore, sir, but you can call me Skunk. They call me that because I can sniff out trouble from a mile away. I always thought it was because you stink. And you are? Corporal Newhouse. I was with the 15th Wisconsin at Chickamauga a few weeks back. Then they pulled those of us who survived that battle back here. Born in Ohio. Moved to Wisconsin to try my hand at mining. And where are you from, Private Moore? I'm from Pennsylvania, sir. Philadelphia. Well, gentlemen. It seems that a band of rebels are operating out of the woods nearby, and they need us to root them out. Our orders are to track them down and capture them if we can, or shoot them if we can't. Gather up your field kits and meet back here in one hour to move out. Private Moore? Call me Skunk, sir. Private Skunk, see if you can arrange for us to acquire some dried beef and fresh vegetables to take with us. I don't intend on eating beans and hard bread tonight. Yes, sir. I'll see what I can do. Mr. Lazarus, are you okay? Are you okay? Thought I was gonna lose you for a moment there. I'm sorry. I think I was just caught up in a memory. Well, like I was telling you, the townsfolk of Burkittsville are prone to getting caught up in the hysteria of the local legends. Now what's your involvement with the Weavers, if you don't mind my asking? Mrs. Weaver took me in. I was hurt and I needed help. She asked me to find Robin in return. She seems to think I'm the only one that can find her. Curious woman, that Mrs. Weaver. She's convinced that the search party is doomed. She put the fear of God in me. Yeah, she has that effect on people. Her whole family seems to be aware of things the rest of us aren't. Even little Robin seems to have some sort of unnatural affinity for those woods. Her son was like that too, before he died, and they say her mother was even more attuned to the spirits, but I didn't know her died in childbirth, I believe. I think they're just folks who are good at telling stories and amusing people around the campfire. Where do you think the little girl is? That girl is a bit rambunctious, and no doubt she's having a grand adventure out there. Has she disappeared before? Never for this long, but she's run off into the woods before, that's for sure. She's even claimed to have talked with Miss Kedward. Kedward? The infamous Wood Witch of Blair. And people say she haunts those woods, talking to them in a mysterious voice and appearing as a ghostly apparition of an old woman. People around here believe she prowls the woods, stealing little girls. They even say her ghostly arm rose up from Tappy Creek East and snatched a little girl named Eileen Trickle back in 1824. 
Most likely it was just careless parents not watching their child closely enough. Some say her mother's ghost still haunts the woods looking for the little girl, while others say it's the witch looking for more victims. If I were you, I'd go back to the farm and wait for the search party to bring her back. I gave Mrs. Weaver my word. Besides, I just can't seem to get that girl out of my head. It's like I can feel her inside of me. She's got an infectious personality, I'll give her that. She has that effect on a lot of people around here. Now, I'll be honest with you. I don't much believe all this supernatural sleight of hand, but there is something unique about Robin. If you've your mind set on finding her, I'll help you in any way I can. What else can you tell me about the woods? There's quite a few legends in this area. People say the ghosts of Indians and Hessians haunt the forest, looking to take lost souls. There are also the legends of the Snally Gaster, a hideous beast that's been seen from time to time, usually around the same night of a local party or wedding. And people tend to see ghosts and goblins more easily after a night of hard drinking and storytelling. No one seems to be able to agree on exactly what this beast looks like. Then there's the usual stories of ghostly soldiers from the Civil War, but those are just stories. I don't think any of these stories are true, but they sure make for good tales. Where, do you think, is the best place to start looking for Robin? Well, I'd start by following the main road, back out toward where the old railroad ran through here. That's the quickest path to the woods. Then I'd follow the creek. No doubt she's near the creek, skipping stones or making mud pies. That's where I'd look. I think I've held you up long enough. If you are going to search for Robin, you should get a move on before nightfall. Yeah, you're right. No sense in wasting daylight. Any last words of advice or help you can give me? I can give you this. It's an old native handicraft. It's supposed to ward off evil spirits. You're also free to look through any of my books if you think it might help. October 24th, 1863. The horrors of battle have followed me even to this remote corner of the war. I have been assigned to command a small group of soldiers into the woods of central Maryland to track down a band of rebel foragers that have been raiding small farms in the area. The troops I've been assigned seem to be good men at first glance, and God willing, I will prove a suitable officer to lead them. I almost hope that we find the rebels gone when we arrive in the woods. I'm not sure if I have the stomach for killing men after what I saw at Gettysburg. Hey Mosley, how well do you know this area anyway? Well enough? Why? Because I was hoping you could tell me where a smartly dressed Union enlisted man might meet some female company. Skunk, the only ladies a man like you is gonna meet in this area are certainly smart enough to steer clear of you. Maybe you're just jealous. Quiet. What's up there, Lieutenant? I'd say it's a group of rebels tearing up the tracks. Spread out, boys. I think we can take them. <laughs> Looks like it's time to whoop us some rebels. Keep quiet, Private. Take ambush positions and wait for me to begin firing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Look at that! We sure whooped them! No officer here. Just a small raiding party. The rest will be hiding out in the woods. Yes. I think- There's another one! Get him! You okay, boy? If I didn't know better, I'd say you'd seen a ghost. <laughs> who... who are you? My name is Steuben. I was just walking by on my way into town to buy some supplies, and I nearly stumbled over you. Are you all right? I think so. Yes. What is your name? Lazarus. 
call me Lazarus. Mm, like the man who rose from the dead, huh? <laughs> Interesting name. So what are you doing out here by this old railroad crossing? I was on my way into the woods to search for the Weaver girl. Do you know about her? <laughs> I think everybody knows about her by now. Went missing in the woods. I ran into Parson Vance and his search party on their way into the woods to look for her. So you're heading out there too? Well, the sun's about to set. Hope you're planning on spending tonight. What do you know about the woods? Yeah, well, for starters, I live out there. I built myself a house back past the old cemetery when I first moved to this area. I don't like people much. And the woods are... Well... They're peaceful. And most people don't have use for an old blind man. And an immigrant at that. Blind? Just like a bat, I'm afraid. But if you're heading into those woods, I'm the man to ask if you want to know anything. Have you run across the Weaver girl? No, not since she disappeared. She sometimes came to play out by my house. And she sure is sweet little girl. Always brought me flowers. If she comes by the house door, you can bet I'll be sure to send her right home. What can you tell me about the woods? Well, they say there's witches in those woods. Of course, they say a lot of things. Everybody seems to have a tale or two about those woods. And I have to confess, I do my best to add to them. Keeps unwanted trespassers away from the house. The story I hear most is that there's an old lady who lives in the woods and feeds on the little kiddies. Huh? <laughs> but I've never seen her. Of course, I never see anything. <laughs> Uh, the scariest thing I ever heard in the woods was an old owl. Still, they say the spirits of the dead from your war between the states still walk the trees looking for something or someone. Me? I think they're just stories. But if they keep the locals from bothering me, all the better. How can a blind man survive all alone in the woods? Ah, I like a man who doesn't mince words. And a good question it is. I've been blind since my mother tossed me into the world. But my lack of sight has led my other senses to make up for it. I can hear things no other man can hear. I can also smell things long before they get to me. Plus, I've learned other ways of dealing with life in the woods. I get along just fine. An immigrant, eh? Where are you from? I'm from Bavaria. The Black Forest, to be specific. Uh, I had to leave a few years back. And I came to this place. It was almost as if I was called here. <laughs> but that sounds like the hauntings of an old madman, doesn't it? <laughs> that sounds like the Viva girl. Maybe you won't have to spend the night in those woods after all. Robin, wait! <laughs> Woohoo! Got three more! This mission will be over before we know it. 
Still no officer. This could be the last of them. They'd have to have a commander somewhere nearby leading the raids. I'll check the bodies for information and ammunition. You keep an eye out for more rebels. Yes, sir! Anything, sir? Just a few mini balls and some powder. These men have very few possessions. All right, let's move out. What was that? Sounds like rocks. I don't see nothing. <laughs> it's a damn bird. All right, let's go. There he goes! I see him! Over here, Lieutenant! Don't let it get me! It's going to kill us all! These damn woods are alive! Ah! You must stop her! See the unseen! Don't let her drain the blood! The sticks are the key to your sight! Stop her! I... What the hell was that, Lieutenant? What was that voice? She was talking to you, Lieutenant. What the hell was that all about? Shut up! All of you! You go to hell, Newhouse. That wasn't anything natural, and it was talking to the Lieutenant here. What the hell was that? I told you to shut up! Lieutenant? What the hell was that, sir? Don't fall now! All right. Let's rest here for a minute. October 24th, 1863. Dearest Anne, the strangest and most frightening thing has happened since my last entry. We encountered a group of rebel sappers attempting to tear up a section of rail outside of Burkittsville, and we were forced to dispatch them. We saw another of them running into the woods and gave chase, but upon entering the wood, all became chaos as my men scattered to the four winds. We eventually came upon a wild-eyed rebel and were confronted with something I cannot begin to describe. It was as if the hand of pure evil came upon the man and spoke to us in a most frightening voice with a warning directed at me. It spoke of a girl and entreated me to stop her from doing something most dire. The man then fell to the earth, dead on the spot. My men were shocked by the experience, and I confess myself that I have no idea what to make of it. What are you writing there, Lieutenant? Writing a book, sir? This is a journal I'm writing to my fiance back home. I'm not very good at writing letters, so I collect my thoughts here, and when the book is full, I'll send it off to her. What's her name? Your fiance, I mean. Anne. Anne Forrester. That's a pretty name. I bet she's beautiful. The most beautiful woman in the whole state of New York. Sir, I have to ask. What the hell do you think that was back there? That rebel, he, he seemed like he was under the control of the devil himself. And that voice. These woods are alive, that's why. Can't you feel it? Ah, nonsense. That rebel was just crazy from fever. What's the matter, couldn't you see it? The locals told me stories about this place. About it being a place of evil. And now I know they were right. What was that? came from across the creek. I'll check it out. God, God, God. What the hell is it? Does anyone see Newhouse? Newhouse is gone. Christ is gone. I think that did it. Let's get across the creek before it comes back. The 
Does anyone see him? He's not coming back, sir. I think we better move on. I believe you're right. Let's move up the trail a bit and set up camp for the night. In the morning, we'll make our way back to town. Yes, sir. Huh. Yes, sir. just trying to spook us. There haven't been Indians living in these parts for almost 75 years. I think whoever took Robin must have planted them here. Why don't you keep them, Lazarus? They might come in handy if you run into any spooks. I still say it seems awful strange that this Lazarus fella showed up right when Robin disappeared. I think he's in cahoots with whoever took her. Now, Andy, you know good and well this man was wounded when Mrs. Weaver took him in. Robin disappeared while Bess was still nursing him. If it's all the same to you, I think I'll just keep looking on my own. You're as free as any of us to do what you like, stranger. Any of you gentlemen know a man named Steubin who lives in these parts? There's nobody living in Burkittsville by that name. Are you sure? He lives out here in the woods. He's a blind immigrant. I'm telling you, no one lives out in these woods, boy. Least of all some blind foreigner. We'd know about it. Now, we want to get a few more hours of searching in before we make camp. So if you don't mind, we'll be off. I got my eye on you, stranger. I know you've got something to do with all of this. October 24th, 1863. I have lost one of my men. After the carnage at Gettysburg, I had hoped I would never again have to see one of the men under my command lose their life. But I now know that this was just a delusion. But even during the height of battle, I do not ever recall losing a man so mysteriously. One minute he was there, and the next he was gone. I now suspect that these woods around Burkittsville truly are alive, and that they will be the death of me. Why are you polishing that thing, skunk? In case we need to use it to call for help, you never know when a bugle will come in handy. What about you, Lieutenant? Why do you keep writing in that journal? It helps me think. And it calms my nerves. What do you think, Lieutenant? Are the rebels just trying to scare us? Ain't no rebels, I tell you that. If they's out here, they's dead. Shut up, Mosley! It's got to be the rebels! Right, Lieutenant? I don't know what to think, to tell you the truth. We'll go back to town tomorrow and report to the Major. Maybe he'll know what to do. I sure wish Newhouse was here. He'd know what to do. Stay with me, Private. We'll be okay if we just stick together. Tomorrow, we'll walk out of these woods. Oh, God. No. Oh, God. Oh, God. It's happening again! It's Newhouse, and Mosley's dead. We're... we're all dead men. We are dead men!
Ah, Mr. Lazarus. It is you, isn't it? Yes, it's me. Very perceptive. For a blind man, yes. As I told you, my other senses have more than compensated for my lack of sight. Funny how I keep running into you. Yes, well, you're not far from my home. Did you find the Viva girl? No, not yet. It seems as if these woods would prefer that I didn't. Come now. Don't tell me you're starting to believe those old wives' tales about this woods being haunted. I'm not sure what I believe anymore. What was that? I thought you were the expert on the woods out here. October 25th, 1863. Dearest Anne, we haven't slept a wink in this woods all night. I have lost another man in a horrific episode that I do not yet understand. Only one private remains under my command, and he has been horribly affected by the events we have encountered. We have begun looking for a way out of the woods, but seem to be drawn ever deeper into them, despite our best efforts. Sir, I hope you're almost done writing, because we need to keep moving. I'm finished. Let's keep moving, Private. Yes, sir. Hey, sir! I see a gate up here. Hurry up! I think it's a house or something. Oh, God. It's a... a graveyard! Shit! It's happening again! What the hell is going on here? Sweet Mary, Mother of Jesus, why are you doing this? Oh my god, it can't be. It's Newhouse and Mosley. But they're dead. Sir, tell me they're dead, sir. I can't take any more. I've got to get out of here. Hurry! There is little time left. Joyben, where are you? This way! Hurry! Preparing them for the ritual. Good. Soon I will be able to transfer the rest of my essence into this vessel. She is strong. She still fights me, even though there is no chance for her escape. She is draining my energy much faster than I had thought. We must complete the ritual soon and purge her soul from this plane. Go to the house and prepare the portal for my arrival. And then you will give me the power of sight and to control the minds of men, yeah? You have been my willing servant. I will reward you as I have promised. Now hurry! I have much to do before I complete this ritual. Yeah. I will prepare the way for you. Thank you, Great One. Help me, please! You tricked me into coming here! a strong soul, a fitting vessel for my essence. You've come too late, soldier. I told you that the girl is mine. You cannot stop me. I shall have her like I had your men. Do you remember? Keep him off. Gotta keep him away. This ain't real. Oh, God! It can't be real! 
Keep back, you hear me? You're dead too! Those dogs got you! It's me. Put the rifle down, Private. No. You've come to get me, but I'm too quick for you. Nobody sneaks up on old skunk. Nobody! Private, I am your commanding officer, and I am ordering you to drop that rifle. That old lady tried to sneak up on me too. She told me that she died in here. That I was gonna die in here too. She thought she could fool me, but I showed her. Oh, I showed her. Mister? Are you okay, mister? Why are you doing this, child? Deliver me from this evil, O oh Lord. Devil, release this child. I command. <coughs> oh, God. Look at my innards. They dragged them out of me. Oh, God. You see, soldier, you are already dead. I killed you then, and she took you from me, but she was too late. Join us. We've waited so long for you to come back. Be one with us. <laughs> Your efforts are in vain. You will never succeed in time. I want to play with you, but the bear man makes me play bad. Please hurry, mister! He's almost finished! Play your game, soldier! You will fail! Dear grandmother, I can't hold him long. He's killing me. But you're... Run! Don't know that you have done! No! No! Hush now. You're okay. You're in a place of healing. You... Calm yourself. You've been shot in the head. You must remain calm. But... It's all right now, Lieutenant. You're going to be just fine. <laughs> 